In this lesson, we're going to start moving the game data into XML data files and change the factories so that they load their game items, monsters, locations, everything else from these data files. This way, if you want to add more objects to the game, you only need to change the XML files. You don't need to rebuild the solution and have a new executable for the players to run. We're going to start with the game items and the item factory. We'll start by opening the solution and in the engine project, add a new game data folder. Just right click on the engine project and select add new folder. Next, right click on the game data folder and select add new item. And under visual C sharp items, you can select data and look for XML file. And the XML file that you want to create, we're going to call it gameitems.xml. I already have it in my project, so I won't create it again. Then you need to click on the gameitems.xml file and go to the properties in the lower right hand corner. And underneath advanced, you'll see copy to output directory. Change this to copy always. This way, every time you build the solution, not only will it output the exe file for the game, but it will copy over all the XML files that we need. Since I've already built this solution a few times, I'll show you where it is. I have the project here in the SOS CSRPG directory. Then there's the WPF UI project folder that it's in. Then we have the bin debug, since I'm compiling this in debug mode so we can test it. And here's where the executable is, the wpfui.exe. We can double click on this and it actually runs the game because this is where the compiled game is. But since I have copy to output directory for the data files, you see there's also this game data folder, which matches the game data folder in the engine project. And there's the game items.xml file that gets copied over whenever I build the solution. And if you ever want to update the game for your players, you can send them new XML files and just have them put them in this game data folder and the game will run like new. It will have all your new items, all your new monsters, locations, whatever you add in there. So let's look at the data we're actually going to put in the XML file. We'll start by looking at mainwindow.xaml. XML stands for extensible markup language. And this XAML that we're using for the UI it stands for extensible application markup language. It's a specific form of XML. In this case, it's using the XML format to hold the information about the controls, the data grids, the tab controls, our tab items, our text boxes, labels, everything. And the XAML controls follow the standard rules for XML. You have your opening tag, in this case, the opening tag for a grid right here, and we have our closing tag with the slash grid. And the grid has some child items. In this case, it has a tab control as a child item. And that tab control has its opening element here and its closing element here on line 225. Inside the tab control, it has three child items, these tab item controls. And if we look at the tab item controls, they have attributes. For instance, header and the attribute value is inventory. We're going to do the same type of thing to store game information. And here is what I have for the gameitems.xml. The first line in the file is the XML declaration. And this says what version of XML are we using and what's our encoding, what's our character set that we're using. Most of the time you're going to see UTF-8 as the encoding. That's kind of the standard character set that's used in probably 90% of the situations. Then we have our game data information and we have our node here, game items. And at the bottom, we have our closing node slash game items. Inside, we're going to have all the nodes or the elements. Sometimes the nodes are also called elements. So in game items, we're having weapons, healing items, and miscellaneous items. And in our weapons, we have our open and closing tags. And then we have all of our individual weapon elements on lines four through eight. Each one of these has a name, weapon, and then it has a set of attributes. The ID that we want to use, the name of the weapon, the price, the minimum damage and maximum damage. 
healing items is the same type of thing. So all of the, the values that we were setting into the properties in the factory, we're now going to get from the attributes and use those to build all of our game items. In case you're wondering, we don't have to do this in XML. That's just what I've chosen to do. There's another format for storing data like this called JSON, J-S-O-N. That stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It does the same type of thing as XML. It just has a different format. Now that we have the game items XML file, we need to change the item factory to read from it. And we need to start out by adding three new using statements. We're going to have using system, using system.io, which is what's going to let us read from a disk file, and using system.xml, which we're going to use so that we can parse all this XML data. Then on line 13, we're going to have this private constant game data file name, and this is the name of the game items XML file, so the factory knows what file to read from. Notice that it starts out with a single period, which means from the current directory where you're running the game, start looking for the file from there. So it's not going to start looking in at the top of your C drive. It's going to look from wherever your game executable is actually running from. And we have these double backslashes here. That's because a single backslash in a string is what's called an escape sequence. It identifies to the program that you want to do some special character. So you would normally see something like this backslash T as a way to insert a tab into a string. Or you might see backslash R backslash N for carriage return and line feed. Because the backslash signifies something special is happening after that, we can't just have backslash game data because it doesn't understand backslash G as a special character. So we need to have backslash backslash, which is the escape sequence to say, just put a backslash character in here. There's a link in the lesson that shows you the common escape sequences that you'll see in C sharp. So now we go to our constructor like function, the static item factory function. On line 19, it's going to check to see if file exists, the game data file name. And if it doesn't, it's going to throw an exception, file not found, and say missing the data file. If it does find the file, we're going to create an XML document object and store it in the variable data. And this is something that's going to load our XML file, and we could start parsing through it. We can start saying, Okay, we've got this XML data loaded. Show me all the weapons. Show me all the healing items. Then we say data.loadXML, and we say file read all text from the game data file name. That gets all of this XML data into our XML document object. Then I have a new function, load items from nodes. This looks at the data, the XML document object, and says select all nodes that have this X path. And the X path is kind of like a directory path if you're looking at the folders on your disk. So this is saying look under the game items node, find the weapons node, and give me all things that start with weapon. If we go back to our XML file, that's going to be these five lines because they're all game items, weapons, weapon. That's their X path. Then we're going to say load items from nodes, game items, healing items, healing item to get all the healing items and do the same thing for our miscellaneous items. This new load items from nodes function is on lines 44 through 78. And what this is going to do is get the nodes which is a XML node list. So it's everything that matches that path, kind of like a collection or a list object you might have for some of our other properties. We'll check to see if nodes equals null, it's going to return, just so we don't try to process something if there is no data. 
Then we're going to do a for each loop for each node in the node list. We're going to determine its category. Since we're going to use this function to load all the items, uh, the weapons, healing items, and the miscellaneous items, we need to figure out which type of object it is. So we're going to say determine item category from the node name. This new determine item category function gets the node name, which is going to be weapon, healing item, or miscellaneous item. And if it's a weapon as a string, then it's going to return our item category of weapon. If the string is healing item, it's going to say this object is a item category consumable. Otherwise, it's going to say it's a miscellaneous item. Then we'll create a game item object, passing in the item category. We're going to get the attribute ID from the node. We'll get the attribute name from the node. We'll get the attribute price from the node. And then we're going to say, if the item category is weapon, this is the last parameter for the game item constructor of is unique. If the item category is a weapon, then it is unique. Otherwise it's not. So this is just like our old game item constructor, except now we're getting the values from the XML node. And we'll take a look at these get XML attribute functions in a second. Then we're going to say if the item category is weapon, we're going to instantiate a new attack with weapon object for our command object for that particular item, passing in the game item, and we're going to get the minimum and maximum damage attribute values from the nodes. These values out here in the XML file. And we're going to set that to the game items action. If the item category is a consumable, which right now is just healing items, then we're going to instantiate a new heal action. And we'll read the hit points to heal attribute, get that value, and pass that in as the heal actions hit points to heal parameter. And then we add that game item that we just created to our standard game items list, which is the static list that we had before up here on line 15. So now we'll look at some of the support functions down on lines 93 through 113. And I have get XML attribute as int. And we're passing in the XML node and the attribute name and saying get the XML attribute and convert it to an integer 32. And we've got another get XML attribute as string where we're passing in the node and the attribute name and we just get the XML attribute. They both call this new get XML attribute function that looks at the node, gets all of its attributes. So here for this healing item, for example, it has four attributes, ID, name, price, and hit points to heal. It's going to try to find the attribute name that we passed in, which is going to be minimum damage, maximum damage, hit points to heal, whatever it is, and assign that to this XML attribute variable. If the attribute's null, we're going to throw an exception. It never should be null unless someone goes in and modifies our XML file and breaks something, but I just added this as a little safety clause here. Otherwise, it's going to return the attribute's value. So if I said for this healing item, get me the hit points to heal. It's going to return two. But notice that all these attributes are defined as strings. They've got the double quotes around them. So this value is always a string, which is why I've got the get the XML attribute as int, which converts the result to an integer. And I have this get XML attribute as string, which we don't really need but I'm doing it so that we kind of have this pattern, which is something we're going to change around a little bit in the generics lesson. And this is all we need to do to change the factory to read the data from the XML file and create all of our game objects from the XML files and nodes and attributes. So just to go over this again, kind of how the flow works. The first time someone tries to use something from this 
static item factory class. This static item factory function is going to run. It's going to hopefully find the XML data file, read all of that into an XML document, then pass in all of the game items weapons to this function that will go out and build the game item from our XML nodes and attributes, including the, the action, and add it to our standard game items list. So that way we can call the old create game item function and have it create a new instance of the game item for us. And this is the pattern we're going to follow for all of our factories. We'll have the XML file, the function that loads all of our objects, we're going to change that to read from the XML file and build our objects, our monsters and locations, recipes, quests, everything from the XML file. And the game will now be a little bit more flexible. So let's run the program and take a look at the player's inventory. We see we've got the pointy stick, they have a quantity of one, a price of one, the granola bar, the oats, honey, and raisins that they start out with. So now I can stop the program, then I can go into the directory with the XML file, our game items XML. I can open this up with notepad and change the pointy sticks price to let's say 99 and save this. Now if I run the program wpfui.exe we'll see that the pointy stick has a value of 99 now. So I'll stop the program and if I rebuild the solution and run it we'll see the pointy stick is back to a value of 1 because when we rebuilt the solution it re-updated it recopied this game items.xml file since we had it as copy every time and the pointy stick has a price of 1 again if you're watching the video on YouTube in the description there'll be a link to the support page with all the source code. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them on the support page and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thanks.